Hi everyone. So this is my first lesson on the McLaurin series. Um, this is just going to be an introduction, explain what it is, where it comes from, etc, etc. The, the next lessons I'll actually do expansions will derive um, McLaurin series for different functions. Um, but yeah, as I say in this video, I just want to kind of get your head around what we're actually doing. Now I'm going to start by showing you something, something that when I first saw this, I was like, what on earth? How is this possible? I thought it was incredible, right? So I'm going to just show you, I can write sine of x as x minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the five over five factorial minus x to the seven over seven factorial, etc. If I if this goes on forever, I get sine x. This is exactly the same as sine x if it goes on for infinity. I can actually do the same for cos x and e to the x and various different functions like this using by using the Maclaurin series. The way it works is, and the reason, look at these two, what these two functions have in common is, they have to be differentiable. So I can do this for, well, Maclaurin can do it, or he did it for any function that is infinitely differentiable at zero, and we can find the, that derivative at zero. Now, when I say infinitely differentiable, I mean I can find the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative, the fourth derivative, the 100th derivative, the millionth derivative. And you know that's true for sine x because sine x is just, it'll just keep it, there's a pattern, it'll be sine x, the derivative of sine x is cos x. So that's the first derivative is cos x, second derivative is negative sine, third derivative is negative cos, fourth derivative is back to sine, and then it just repeats itself. And e to the x is even easier. First derivative is e to the x, second derivative is e to the x, hundredth derivative is e to the x. Okay, and I can I know the value of that derivative at zero because I just sub in zero. In fact, for e to the x, it's always one. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the end, I'm going to kind of show you how it works. Because instead of kind of trying to derive the whole thing, I'm just going to show you how it works. And then hopefully, that will be enough for you to understand it. Um, so basically, what Maclaurin did now, I may as well introduce you to Taylor, Brooke Taylor invented the Taylor series. And it was actually, well, Maclaurin, the Maclaurin series came from the Taylor series. So I think Brooke Taylor deserves the, the most credit, but we're not studying Taylor series in the IB. We're only going to look at the Maclaurin series. And the Maclaurin series is a very particular type of Taylor series, basically where it all happens at zero. So that's all I'll say about that. You can definitely, I advise you go and Google um, Taylor series and Maclaurin series to learn a bit more about it. But for now, I'm just going to talk to you about Maclaurin. So what Taylor or Maclaurin decided to do is, they said, well, okay, we have some function that is infinitely differentiable. What if we got a polynomial who had the same first derivative and the same second derivative and the same third derivative and the same fourth derivative and the same fifth derivative and the same mil same millionth derivative? Now just think about that. If you have two functions, one is a one is just, I don't know, sine x. Well, let, let's look at this one. One is so this is sine x and this is a polynomial. So you have a function, sine x, and some polynomial function. And their first derivative is exactly the same. And their second derivative is exactly the same. And their third derivative is, is exactly the same at zero. And their fourth derivative, fifth derivative, millionth derivative. What's going to happen is you're just going to end up with the same derivative, with the same function. It has to be the same thing. I mean, how could you have the every single derivative is the same and it not be exactly the same function. So that's the kind of idea. Now I'm going to show you how for any for any function for any infinitely differentiable function, this series the way it's set up will always give you the same first derivative, second derivative and third derivative. And it'll actually be so I'll start with f of zero, at zero, this function. So imagine this is your sine x, and this is your polynomial. So at zero, f of zero equals f of zero plus 
these all become zero because I'm subbing in zero for x. So everything here to the right is zero. So it's plus zero if you like, or just f of zero equals f of zero. Great. They're the same. Now let's get the first derivative. The first derivative. Now let me just go back to this. The first derivative of this is equal to. Now remember f of zero, f dash of zero, f dash dash of zero, f dash 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 of zero. These are just um, values. These are a con this is a constant. So it'll behave like a constant. So it's like something x. So what's the derivative of this? Well, the derivative of, of a constant is zero, so that disappears. What's the derivative of this? Well, it's, it's something x, so the derivative is just f dash of zero. Plus, what's the derivative of this? Well, again, these are constants, but I've got a, uh, x squared here, so it's, it's going to be 2 times x, 2x over 2 factorial, that stays there, times f dash dash of zero. So that's the derivative of this, just 2x times what, what the, the constant that's there. Plus, what's the derivative of this? Well, it's 3x squared over 3 factorial times this. This is our third derivative at zero, plus 4x cubed over 4 factorial, the fourth derivative at zero, plus etc. Now, let's get f dash of zero. So f dash of zero is equal to f dash of zero is going to give me f dash of zero. So I have f dash of zero plus, so I'm just subbing in zero for x. This is, there's no x here, so this just stays the same. This becomes zero, this becomes zero, this becomes zero, everything else is zero. So I'm left with f dash of zero equals f dash of zero. So the first derivative of this thing is equal to the first derivative of this polynomial. Let's keep going. What about the what about the second derivative? So the second derivative is, I'm going to now differentiate this thing. This goes to zero. This turns to 2 over 2 factorial is 1. So the, um, And I have an x here, so it's 1x. The derivative of x is just 1. So I'm left with f dash dash of 0. Plus, what's the derivative of this? Well, it's 6x. 2 times 3 is 6. 6x f dash 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 of 0 over 3 factorial plus 3 times 4 is 12. 12 over 4 factorial. Sorry, 12x squared f fourth derivative of 0 plus dot, dot, dot. Hopefully, you're starting to see the pattern here. So what is f dash dash of 0, the second derivative at 0? Well, it's f dash dash of 0 plus 0, 0, 0. Everything else is 0, so I'm just left with f dash dash of 0. So the second derivative is the same. So now you can see, and you can see hopefully why, why it's factorial, because every time I do this, I'm, I'll just do it once more. When I get the third derivative of x, this disappears. I now get um, 6, 6 over 3 factorial. I'll put this 6 over 3 factorial. The x disappears, f dash 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 of 0. But the 6 over 3 factorial is just going to be 1. They cancel. Similarly here, when I get the next derivative, this is going to be 24 over 4 factorial. This is going to this is going to cancel because 24 over 4 fa over 4 factorial is 1. Um, but this is going to be 24 over 4 factorial x f fourth derivative at 0 plus dot dot dot. And now I get the third derivative at 0 is equal to they cancel f dash 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 of 0 plus 0, they're the same. So look, f of 0 is the same for my, let's say, sine of x and my polynomial. The first derivative at 0 is the same. The second derivative at 0 is the same. The third derivative at 0 is the same. And if I kept doing this forever and ever and ever, what I would get 
is the same first derivative, the same tenth derivative, the same hundredth derivative, and ultimately the same function. That is the Maclaurin series. That's what the whole thing is all about. Okay, so as I said, in the next in the next videos, we'll actually we will actually derive some Maclaurin series. We'll do the we'll derive sine x and uh, we'll look at e to the x and we'll do some some other ones. Um, but before I do that, I just want to show you how this how this looks visually because this is the this is the next thing that when I saw it, I was like, my word, this is incredible. So let me just come back to this. Okay, so here I have here I have. Let's zoom out a little bit. This is the function sine x. Now, if I just this is actually the expansion well, that I showed you of, of sine x. It's x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial forever and ever and ever. So if I just put x like this, so what happens here is this has the same first derivative. Sine, sine of x, its first derivative at 0 is 1 because its first derivative is cos x. Cos of 0 is 1. So his first derivative is one at zero, and an x's first derivative is one at zero. So they they have the same first derivative, but they don't have the same second derivative because his second derivative is actually um, well, actually they, maybe they do have the same second derivative, but they certainly don't have the same third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh derivative. But this guy, now if we if we look at this curve, what happens is he's got the same first derivative and the same. So the the reason there's a there's a zero term here. The x squared term is the same. So he's got the same first derivative, second derivative, and third derivative. So look what happens. He, it starts to look a bit more like the sine x function. Let me draw another one or add another term. So we start to see it actually starts to hug the curve like this. It gets closer and closer. Each polynomial gets closer and closer and closer. And actually, if you if you draw this is the series in this is the series in uh, sigma notation. It's the sum from zero to n. The negative one makes it go minus plus minus plus minus. And I'm, I'm going to do a I'm going to show you how to do this in a bit more detail. But here it's x to the power of two k plus one over two k plus one factorial because that's my my three five seven um, sequence. So if I show you this now, this is when n is uh, zero, when n is one, two, three, and watch this. It just it just starts hugging the curve, and the more the higher I go up, the more it looks like sine x. Now, if you actually zoom in here, you zoom right in here. It looks, look, it's not actually touching. It looks like it is. There's only, well, there might be a few places where it's where it does actually meet, but the the only place where it's it, that you know it's going to be exactly the same is at zero. The rest of it is just going to be really, really, really close. But if even if like if I zoomed in, even I'd say here, I don't know, if, like it'll be so close. I don't think d even Desmos can go close enough there. That's that's the limit of how how zoomed in Desmos can go. And I can't even see the difference. Even though there probably is some tiny, tiny, tiny difference, and that's why it's called an approximation. Um, here certainly I'll be able to see. Yeah, so the Taylor series is an approximation of the function, but if it goes on for to infinity, it's to, uh, it's theoretically the exact same function. Okay, hopefully that makes some bit of sense. As I say, the first time I saw this, I was both amazed and confused. So definitely, I would recommend going, watching the watching the next videos, practicing some of the um, McLaurin series questions, deriving some some series, and then come back to this to kind of hopefully it'll be easier for you to, to then get your head around um, 
what McLaren was doing, or what Taylor were doing, Taylor was doing when um, they came up with these. But um, as I say, yeah, the fact that you can write these functions that you're very familiar with as a sum of terms like this is pretty incredible. Okay, so I'll see you in the next few the next few videos.